I got that part. I got that part. Um, but, yeah, okay. We're re recording. This is actually take number two. Two. The energy is gone. <laughs> the, energy, the energy is still alive. Damn okay. it. It's still real to me. Damn it. No. Um, yeah, no, my bad. My bad. Uh, basically, we without, had an echo. With those stuff, no, you can tell Michael what to do. He forgot to record this guy. <laughs> right? I'm still David not even shaking his head. Hey, 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 hey. Let's let's get something out of the way. It's not the Skype call. It was that I forgot to turn um, down the sound, so basically it's gonna overlay, and I can't really solve that in post. So and Jeremy, don't you hate it when it overlays? Yeah, like I understand what any of that sh- sh- means. Right? You guys better not be <laughs> swearing on my on my Christian podcast. Right? This is this is mine. <laughs> All right, I run this. <laughs> King Kong ain't got shit on me. Yo, you're going to be playing basketball in Pelican Bay. <laughs> Yo, you're going to be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I'm through with you. <laughs> Yo, how is this a worse start? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get some introductions out of the way. Let's get some introductions. So, basically, uh, we've had to replace Stefano. He uh, got canceled by some SJWs. Mm-hmm. Um Thanks. I particularly yeah particularly it's crazy he's defense. like he's like the most staunch uh liberal but yet he gets canceled by sjw's yeah it's we, crazy. we eat our own we eat our and own and he deserves it too <laughs> <laughs> yeah they've taken him away uh, but beside him sans stefano we got jeremy yo 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 the assassin mm-hmm. a sipo uh Come into a gym near you where he will be hitting you with his Ganyan hook and his across straight. Okay. Uh, no, please. Uh, After uh, this weekend, I don't want to hear about no across straights. Okay. okay. You, chill you, out. Yeah, chill hey, out. Hey, hey, chill hey, out. Chill hey, out. Hey, don't even come for us. Hey, I don't hear hey, that, man. hey. Wow. You, you, we'll okay. get to him. And how dare you, sir? Yes, exactly. How dare you, sir? Yeah. He is a national treasure. Okay, Abdul thinks, Razak Al Hassan is a national treasure. He thinks because he's got a whole bunch of guys who are champions who aren't even like actually from the, the, the country. country. Oh, the country. Man. That, let's, like let's, he thinks he can let's talk. Let's get the intro done. Let's get the intro right. out of the way, man. Let's and, get the intro out of the way. And then over in Ottawa, uh, representing Ottawa Fight and Fitness. We've got man. You ain't got a shot. I'm not representing no one. I'm representing myself. I'm representing myself. Right. I like Ottawa Fight and Fitness. They're great. Um, no shout out, to, shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah. They don't even weird. sponsor us. Yeah. Screw that. I'm gonna beep <laughs> yeah, out their name. I'm gonna, out their uh, name. I'm gonna beep out their name. Yeah. Shout out to them. Shout out to all gyms. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. You're gonna have to edit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just that. honestly. Honestly, I'm just gonna censor it. I'm just gonna censor it. Keep it in, keep it in. Whatever. <laughs> I, I just swore, so maybe we're gonna have to take that one out. But yeah, what's up? How are you guys doing this week? Yeah, David. Uh, we're good. And yeah, this is me, Michael. Um, whatever. Uh, who cares about me? No one does. I'm oh sad. Oh my life. god. Yo, can we redo that? <laughs> no, no, it's funny. It's hilarious. Um. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, we got to talk some MMA finally. Um, mm. We, we got to talk about some fights. But first, some news. Uh, yeah. The, the news. Um, there's been some interesting developments taking place. And we start in the world of baseball, ironically. I know we don't talk it much, but I, we have to. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> I think it's Yo, important. Stefano, please come back. No, please no, come guys. Back, it's, 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 to get Michael out back uh, to real Michael in. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, listen. We have to talk about this because uh, history was made. What happened? Uh, first ever female general manager. First ever oh. Asian Canadian general manager uh, in um, Kim Ng. Uh, was just announced she'll be general she'll be the general manager for the miami marlins as a and yeah she's she's been in the game for a long time but and so this is obviously going to be a a great hire i know the rockies really wanted her but they missed out on her by just a hair so 
Um, this is actually a great hire beyond the fact that she's a woman. This this is a woman who's been successful in the game of baseball in some capacity or another behind the scenes. So, yeah, this is a great hire, but it's also history. And I thought it was important to talk about that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the first wow. piece of news. Michael, her name's uh, e. First of all, I, I just got to say, where did you get that soapbox? Um, <laughs> and can I get <laughs> can you get off it, please? Uh, um, and number two, can you actually talk about this a little bit more? Because I actually saw like the headline for this, and I just assumed that. First of all, I thought like she was gonna be an owner, so it's interesting that she's not just a GM, but it, it's like for a GM position, I guess, and for I guess uh, male sport, which doesn't happen a lot. Um, but I didn't even know she was Canadian, so any kind of background you could give on her would be great if you have any, or I could just Google it. Um, I mean, from what I remember is that she was, I can't remember the team she was on, but she's actually been at some capacity, a world, a world series, um, executive. Um, that's why I remember. I also, I remember she's been in the, uh, in some sort of capacity in the back in the, ex I guess in the back or like, you know, in the front office in some capacity for two decades in baseball, whether it be scouting, whether it be development. Um, I know she's actually, I think, um, if I have to remember correctly, because I'm doing this off of memory, her and Alex Anthopoulos, um, former general manager of the Blue Jays, current general manager of the Atlanta Braves, um, actually go way back. And so they, they were part of an office. I can't remember what team, but they were actually – um, from that office. So, and you obviously the success with Alex Atopoulos has been through the roof and he's relatively young as well. So she's also a very young general manager in comparison to her peers, just like Alex Atopoulos. So, you know, you're seeing a revolution also take place, which is why, like as much as, as historic as it is, I think this is just the fact that she's good, really, really good. And the, the cult of wherever they were from looks like they're producing some fruit with Alex Anthopoulos and now Kim Ng. Um, but yeah, if you have anything else that you'd like to add, then please. Cool. Shout out to her. She's not Canadian. She is from um, Indiana. But <laughs> still, huge. Yeah. Um, shout out to her. Yeah. Uh, so, in other news, MMA news. Um, yeah. Uh, Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor saga. This is. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We. <laughs> Uh, we were kind of confirmed that it was going to be taking place January 23rd. I put the, I put it up the poster. We had the promotion going, and then all of a sudden, Dan White says it's not confirmed yet. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. What's what's going on? What's your thoughts on it? Quick thoughts. Why hasn't that happened yet? Is my question. It looks like it's money on Dustin Poirier's end. And, you know, this is – it's concerning that Dana White likes to have these squabbles with guys about, like, literally thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? In an organization that's supposed to be the pinnacle of mixed martial arts. Um, This is not, like, what he's – like, he, he hasn't offered him anything in the mills? No. No. It's all – oh, wow. The mills. The mills. So not even – the McGregor. Mills. Not even How do we know, though? How do we know the details of the contract? Well, it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, but we I would... don't know the details of the contract, and that's the problem with a lot of these. Not to be too like, ah, guys, but that's the problem with a lot of these discussions. We never know the details. All we get is the headlines and, like, you know, the, uh, um, the vague parts of, you know, the discussions. So, like, it's tough to make an educated decision or have an educated Take. opinion yeah what i will say though is i'm getting tired of like you know talking about everything but good fights mm -hmm. you know oh david oh the contract with dana white like we already know what it is we already know what it is with dana white so uh, at, at this point like unless dana white is coming commenting about a fight that he's about to make or a fight that you know I don't, I don't know. I, I just find like, the whole Poirier and McGregor discussion just... That's not a good fight to you? Is it a good fight? I mean, what what for? It's a good fight. It's just a fight. It's like, I, I like the fight stylistically. Justin Poirier has been... They've both grown. Um, Dustin Poirier has grown exponentially. Um, he does a lot more things. I think one of the things that counter capitalized on 
was defensively, Poirier only went to one kind of style, which was kind of this, like, side shell. Um, and now, Dustin Poirier is a lot more than that. He's a shoulder roll guy. He's, uh, he's a guy who, you know, uses a, a lot more movement. He has a great double jab into his left hand. And it's another southpaw. And McGregor does struggle against other southpaws. That, that is a thing. So, uh, yes. Yeah. My thing is, like, I feel like at this point it's almost like a... You know how musicians have, like, rollouts for their albums? Uh, where they'll have, like, a... Or even, like, uh, movie stars do it, too. Where they'll have, like, either, like, a crisis or they'll do, like, some charity work or do make some kind of newsworthy thing. Like Kanye. So that they can... Track. Pardon? He's uh, one... Of, like, like Kanye, right? Yeah, like Kanye. So Perfect. Are like you Kanye saying, West. So you're saying both these... Both these fighters or one of these fighters is getting the Kanye treatment? I mean, I know that McGregor definitely gets the Kanye treatment mm -hmm. in all of his fights. All I'm saying is just that, I don't know, I just feel like it's almost like a rollout for fights nowadays. It's like pay, where the fighter complains about being paid, and then there's a, discuss, then there's a media article about the fight being almost off because, you know, they don't have enough money. And then there's another media article about how, you know, they're back into negotiation and then the fight comes and it's part of the promo. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was, wasn't that the, like the Tony Ferguson, Justin yeah. Gaethje rollout? Yeah, but then uh, Justin Gaethje end up denying. I don't know. I don't, I'm not even too sure about this storyline. Um, I was actually about to even respond with that. Like, didn't uh, Ferguson back out of a fight to uh, stand with his brother or something like that or like? It was something about, like, fighter solidarity. I remember you guys mentioned it like that. Or doesn't that tell you that it's not really, like, a conspiracy or, like, uh, some sort of, like, uh, elaborate plan to, like, sell fights? It's kind of an actual discussion and an actual, you know, debate between fighter and owner of the UFC, Dana White. Uh, I, that tells me that like these guys are actually trying. I, I mean, is, wasn't me, that wasn't that a story? It, it's clarify my clarify yeah, it's, my. Okay, so what I heard was Tony Ferguson was was st standing with Dustin Poirier to get Dustin Poirier more right, money. Okay, that's why I heard. I mean, look, it it could be true. It could not be true. It seems like that's the case now that I think about it. Um, but I think it's just look for me. It's this, and we had this conversation off the top. If you want high-level athletes to come to your sport, a lot of high-level athletes do a cost-benefit analysis of which sport to go in, right? They can do multiple sports. And you you, you can't – if guys are if guys think, oh, I got to pay X amount of money for a camp. I got to pay X think, amount of money for, to, to train. I got to do this. I got to do that. Can and, I just say something, though? Sorry. Go ahead. I just want to say, like, maybe it's just because – I think this is the problem why you have one entity. This is the problem why having one entity is the most powerful – you know, in mixed uh, mixed martial arts, is because you know one guy makes sets the price and one guy decides how um, valuable you are. And I think this is because Dustin Poirier doesn't really have as much name value as other guys like Nurmagomedov Medoff and uh, mm -hmm. uh, even Justin Gaethje. Just recently, kind of got that sort of um, all star status by beating Ferguson. So, like, I think, like, one person decides your value. Like, I know we're going to talk about it later, but, like, even Kel Brooks and, and uh, I'm sorry, Kel Brook and uh, Crawford, like, that took, like, just under a year to set up because of the money. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the money issue. So, I think, and, and Kel Brook, like, really got lucky with his payday. So, like, I think. Uh, I mean, Kel Brook is still a name, despite the fact. I know, that he's he a name because he beat Sean Porter for the IBF. But, like. Still, he's not he's not a name he he got overpaid and Terrence Crawford oh, immensely, immensely. and Terrence Crawford got host. what he well he got host. He got host. Let's 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 call it like it like it is. He got host. But he squeezed as much as, as he could out of that, which was still I think it was like what, like five or four million dollars? Like Yeah. Which what well, but like I say that to say like this is the problem with having, you know, one guy make all the decisions and they're not being different. Uh, you know, belts that guys can fight for. Like, that's what makes – that's what – that's. What, but at what, the same token, though, there's too many belts in, in boxing. There's mm -hmm. too many guy pot cooks in the kitchen to get fights together. Mm -hmm. And and if the NBA, any, NBA, NBA NHL, MLB, and um, – NBA, NHL, MLB, why am I forgetting the last yeah, – NFL, 
right? All all can do it where they have one organization and everyone gets treated fairly. Why can't we expect the same out of the UFC who tries to portray themselves as a league? Anyway? Because when because in boxing because in boxing and other fighting sports, once you lose, and also depending on who you lose on, who you lose to, uh, you know that could be the end of your career. Yeah, good point. All like right, not in ba- in basketball, in basketball, and uh, football and baseball, you lose to the you lose to the Lakers. Okay, it's try again next year. In football, in boxing, or maybe in uh. UFC or MMA, you know, you lose this guy once or twice, you're done. We don't want to see you anymore. I mean, it's kind of sad. I go, yeah, and I wouldn't go that far. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far for MMA. I know I'm being a, a, little, say, a little exaggerated, but go ahead. I'm just saying it's that's the case. No, go ahead. Go ahead, David. Sorry. No, 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 no. You know what? I don't even remember my points. Um, okay, <laughs> so we're going to get to the Crawford Brooks analysis, uh, but I – you know, with our boxing correspondent, but a couple quick news. Oh, wait, wait, news wait, wait, wait. No, Sorry, I go ahead, go ahead. I remember it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. It, it had to do with, um, yeah, with the whole, I mean, it's the whole dictator versus democracy debate, right? And some people could argue that in its early stages, MMA needed a dictator like Dana White, who would basically grab the sport by the reins and try to pitch it to whoever in order for it to be successful. But you know, now we're getting to a point where we need more opinions and people are complaining about justice, right? So, um, and I just wanted to disagree with Michael's point about, you know, MLB, NBA, NHL, even soccer. There's always and will always be wage disputes and labor disputes between mm-hmm. those who are working and those who own the the means of production or whatever or fair, fair who, enough who, but they always figure out a way for the cba to work that was my whole point right They're, they always figure yeah, it out yeah sometimes though but sometimes we have lockouts sometimes we have lockouts right yeah um fair and enough. that's the point we've never had like an mma or like a ufc lockout because like the system just doesn't exist until we have like you know multiple i, I don't know no They're no fair enough be, i understand like, yeah, no, I, I got it. Or government intervention, and that's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> government is never going to intervene. <laughs> yeah. All right, Um. quick quick. Uh. couple news items. So Tiago Santos is getting right back at it. Uh, he His next fight has been announced. He's going to face Alexander Rakic, and I believe it's March. He's going to be facing March. Um, you don't have to comment on that. Uh, he's Was going... he injured in the last fight? I just wanted to ask. No. I, I thought Rakic already had a fight. No, um, but yeah. So yeah, he's facing Rackage in March. Uh, then on to other news: Kayla Harrison, uh, PFL's uh, Kayla Harrison, who fights at lightweight, uh, one fifty-five, is going to move down to featherweight because I I'm assuming she wants that sweet sweet mohone of fighting at featherweight. That's a premier division. Well, it's not a premier division, but it's a division that's in the UFC, and so if Kayla Harrison can move down, then obviously that means greener pastures are in store for her. But it's going to be – she is a big 55-er, so it's going to be interesting to see how she can make that weight and compete at that weight. Um, Let's see. Other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Cropper versus Brooke happened yesterday. Um, I want to kind of get into that a little bit before we, you know, go through the – um, Baron card that was uh, Dos Anos versus Felder. No offense, but it was Bar- Baron. Um, so Crawford versus Brooke, uh, boxing correspondent. We need to, we need to get you a jingle, and I can do it. I just <laughs> haven't gone around to it. But Jeremy, uh, what you what you see here? What what do you want to talk about? Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, um, this is this part of the year where boxing is starting to pick up. Uh, you've had some great fights. You had a great month of October. Uh, did you guys talk about Davis versus uh, Santa Cruz? No, actually, we did okay, not. Okay, well, that happened. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Haney versus um, uh, Gamboa. Gamboa. I'm sorry. We did go over said that said that one. Uh, Gamboa versus Haney. That happened last week. Uh, so, you know, boxing is starting to pick up. Uh, and just recently, this past uh, yesterday, you know, uh, as Michael alluded to, Crawford versus Kell Brook. Um, Crawford, you know, stopped Brook in the fourth round 
And uh, this was one of those fights where, you know, it was competitive until it wasn't. You know, uh, Kel Brook, uh, a, cha- a former IBF welterweight champion, you know, beat um, Sean Porter for that title. Uh, lost it to Errol Spence, I believe. Errol Spence bro- broke his orbital bone. And before he w- he went to fi- uh, fight Errol Spence, he fought Triple G. He moved up a weight to fight Triple G, who who uh, broke his other orbital bone. And, you know, um, a lot of um, boxing aficionados, you know, said that that took a lot out of him. Those were his two losses. So, you know, this guy competes. He competes against the best. But, uh, you know, Crawford um, Crawford stopped him. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was competitive. It really was. It was really What was comp- interesting to me, though, is he not just stopped him, but he stopped him. The trouble started with a jab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Kel- wait, trouble for Crawford? Was it a jab? No, for Brooke. For, for Brooke. When, when Brooke. Yeah, yeah, because what I noticed was Crawford came out in an orthodox stance, and uh, Kel Brook is orthodox, and he want- and uh, Crawford is one of those rare fighters who's- who can put you down in both stances. Uh Crawford's originally a orthodox as well, but he puts guys down in the southpaw. And I think once he switched to that southpaw in the halfway through the third round, or maybe it was the beginning of the fourth round, that's when he took away Kell Brook's jab. And if you know anything about Kell Brook, which I've slowly started to learn about him as they were promoting this fight, Kell Brook utilizes that jab as good as anybody, probably better than anybody in the welterweight division. He really utilizes that jab, and Crawford took it away by going southpaw and taking away that outside foot so that he could land more of his combos. And once that happened, he just caught him with a clean, I think David called it a check hook earlier in our pre-show discussion. It was like a, it, it, was, it looked kind of like a jab, but it, yeah, I guess you could call it a hook. It's uh, like that weird Israel Asanya style up jab where it's like it's right. coming in on an angle. Yeah, and... it came in on kind of like a different angle, which he did that by by establishing yeah. his outside foot. Yeah, go ahead. Dave. And he had the torque to it at the end. And he had the torque to it at the end. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a great, it was a great punch. Yeah, but like, how do you like? Wasn't it crazy? I, like, do you guys have any comments on how like? It just how the fight just changed that rapidly. Well, this is the beauty of combat sports is that you are there is such thing as a now in this instance, I don't think it's Hail Mary, but there is such thing as a kind of, you know, seven, seven, seven score play like a seven touchdown play. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or a or a 30 point, you know, three pointer or, you know, I'm saying there is such thing as like a big you know, yeah. score where it can change everything on an instant. Yeah. And I, you know, you see Santa Cruz versus Davis where oh, Santa yeah. Cruz is competitive, like too, competitive. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden slip uppercut, boom, fight's over. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I think this is the, one of those ones where, you know, look, it was still, it was four rounds. I'd see what would happen over eight, nine, ten, But if, you know, I think Lomachenko learned it too. Is that if you don't have that kind of, you know, knockout power, it makes life difficult for you, where you can't necessarily u- utilize the fact that in combat sports there is such a thing as a, you know, a, a finish, an yeah. end, right? Um, and mm. you know, that's just yeah. kind of the unfortunate thing for Brooke is that you know you were doing well until you weren't, right? Yeah, I I thought yeah I thought Cal Brooke was doing pretty good um i thought the first couple of rounds were razor close honestly and afterwards maybe maybe the third round i would have given to like kind of clearly to uh crawford but uh yeah the fourth in the fourth round that kind of that knockout kind of came out of nowhere um as you said jeremy i think it was the right check hook up David, David's undergoing technical difficulties with his dog. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know too much about either Cal. Well, I know who Terrence Crawford is. Terrence Crawford is a bad man. Uh, I mean, that, I think that's what we that have established. Box. Like, he's, he's, yeah. No, it's yeah, just. Yeah, man, like, that it, can box. Yeah. And not just, like, you know, at, like, the highest stage. Like, he's not, like, a prima donna with it. Like, mm-hmm. his attitude is, like, no, I'm going to beat everybody whether it's like you know in your backyard whether it's just like outside inside it doesn't matter 
whether someone is in front of 80,000 people, nobody, like, it doesn't matter. That guy comes with the same energy every single time. And it's kind of like a dream boxer at that, at, I would say, at that rate, because he's just he's just nasty with it. And, yeah. yeah, you know, you can go into all, like, the technical, like, his fluidity is crazy. Obviously. I just like the fact that he can fight um, in both stances. Like, there's some guys who kind of have some leakage yeah. when they go to, like, their not natural stance. They can <laughs> utilize it, but they can't fight but out of it. <laughs> We know a lot of, but I mean, especially in MMA, now we know like stand switching isn't exactly like new. Like a lot of people do it, but mm -hmm. not everybody has the same like viciousness yeah. on like from both stances. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's like deadly, like whether it's like orthodox or like, honestly, I don't know which hand he has. Is he an orthodox fighter? Like I, I really don't know. Naturally um, orthodox. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to think is like, technically, okay. What I wanted to say was that um, Kelbrook actually made it pretty competitive for the yeah. first couple of uh, rounds. And honestly, uh, that was probably, in my opinion, and no disrespect, but some of the closest Crawford rounds I've seen um, in, a, like, in my watching Crawford life. But still, it doesn't matter, man. As soon as he got him with that hook, I'm not even sure. I have to go back and rewatch it, but uh, that hook, yeah. jab, whatever. Uh, yeah. It was a wrap. And yeah, one thing matter. I will say: How many fighters do you see knock somebody down and then don't finish them? Don't finish them off afterwards. Crawford was not playing. Like within like ten seconds, like it was like a shark in blood and fast water. Like it, it, was, it was a wrap. So yeah. shout yeah. out to him, man. He's the best fighter in the world. Best fighter. Best boxer. Like pure boxer. Out yeah, there, I would say. I can't think of anybody better. No, that's facts. Uh, at the moment, he's the pound for pound best fighter and his two distinguishing qualities are that his killer instinct like you said when he knocks somebody's down he goes for the kill and he can see it clearly like when you saw he put him when you saw that flurry that he dropped when he put him away he's looking to hit him on the sweet spot on the chin so he's got that killer instinct and his iq it wasn't so much on display i mean it was on display for this fight uh, clearly, the fact that he chose to switch to switch to a uh, uh, southpaw, so that was very intelligent. And um, you know, he's always been a master of distance and everything. And actually, one thing is that you know, um, Kel Brook is a bit large, like a, little, a, a bit denser, a bit larger than uh, Crawford, and he's taller, I believe, too. Yeah. So um, yeah, has a tough time making it to that Walter weight. Uh... Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But his IQ, I would say, is uh, his most distinguishing quality. His fight IQ, his you know, his yeah, his fighting IQ. Sorry, I'm just like trying to remember what I'm trying to say. But basically, uh, yeah. Well, also, what I remember about that fight is, for all the it was close, and you know, uh, Brooke might have even stolen a round, maybe two, depending on you know how you view the fight. Uh, I'm not really sure Crawford got hurt, really. No, I, I wouldn't say he got hurt. Yeah, like his defense was on point. It's always on point. Um, and that's just another thing. Like, it's one thing to have, like, a crazy offensive game, but to, like, have, you know, an amazing defensive game and then layer that on top with, like, some crazy attacking stuff that people are like, we've never seen this guy. Well, not never seen this kind of stuff, but are harking back to like the old days like yeah no i i think even in if even in it not being a great performance i think maybe even he would say that um he didn't get hurt and i think that just goes to speak to his amazing uh skills i mean you know oh. when you, when you do take a look like i think yeah if you were gonna be analytical about it i think the jab was stifling crawford a little bit when he was in orthodox for mm. a little bit um i think Kelbrook is really good with his movement he that's that's a plus but i think when we do take a look at this um and we look at back on it two years from now all people are going to remember is terrence crawford knocked out a high level elite boxer who's a championship level boxer mm who beat Sean Porter in four rounds, right? That's what we're going to remember. He beat him in four rounds. No one remembers that Amir Khan was giving Canelo Alvarez a lot of issues mm -hmm. with his speed. They just remember Amir Khan getting knocked the you-know-what out in the fifth, mm -hmm. right? 
that stage presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stage presence. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, when are we? I, I got a question for Jeremy. When are we getting that Spence versus Crawford fight? I was like, just about to say I was the like, we were two get to best, it. the two best fighters in the welterweight division by a country mile are Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford. I really like Errol Spence. I really like Errol Spence. You I do, like eh? him, but once again, I don't think he has the same like viciousness on offense that. Um, but he's so smooth. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He's, he's so- smooth and he's quick. And, you know, he's got power, and um, he's knocking guys out. His mm-hmm. defense is, I would say, as good, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but He's a I lot more know. traditional in his, in, in his approach, though, of course. Like, just yeah. orthodox. He stays there, and he just he works off the shoulder roll. Um, he's got pretty solid high guard, too, which doesn't get a lot of credit. But, um, you know, that's, he's a lot more of a traditional American-style boxer. But he's just silk. He is like silk when he's in yeah, there. Yeah, he's got the – yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Errol Spence has the finesse. Crawford has the killer instinct and the IQ. Um, I'll say, you know, uh, Terrence Crawford is going to have to sit patiently and wait for Errol Spence to uh, clean up, you know, uh, whoever, uh, you know, PBC throws at him. Um, it's gonna be like three matchups, though. No. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking they. I'm thinking it's not. I'm. I'm thinking we're not gonna get it for at least uh, spring and f- for at least winter and spring of 2021. Probably not until after May 2021. Well, well we won't see, but it, it will happen. I do believe it will happen. I um, and it's gonna be. It's gonna be uh, e- epic when it does happen, but it will be a while. Like uh. But I can just see bo- them doing – knowing boxing, I can just see them doing mm-hmm. something stupid like this where they give um, Spence – they give Spence somebody like – I don't know. You know, I, I, I throw a name out for me because they could, they could, they'll give him so many other names. And the thing about boxing is – Maybe Patrick Terexio they might give him. Yeah, and, and, and then all of a sudden you're not going to – you're not going to see it because – because so and so is a bum, and so and so, you know, it needs money, and da da da. da. I I just no, I, I have faith. Here. I have faith only because if you look at the trend of this year, you had Fury, uh, Wilder, F- Fury Wilder. You had, and then you had Lomachenko Lopez. That's I'm just true. looking at the trend of how boxing is going right now. Like boxing has been in a lull for a while because of, of this reason. They they don't get guys exactly. Who are, yeah. But I think it's changing because you have guys who want to fight. You know, Terrence Crawford wants to fight Errol Spence. It's just that Errol Spence's you know promotional company you know want him to fight other guys. Want him to maybe get one or two more belts, and then because you know Terrence Crawford is a, a unified champion, and I think. At 147, and I think Errol Spence is, what, at 150 maybe? Yeah, something like that, 154? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I think it will happen. I have faith. Uh, if Yeah, I think it will happen late next year. Well, I think, you know what, I think boxing promoters are taking a page out of Dana White's book where they're, like, say, where they're saying to everybody, you know what, people want to see these fights and they're not having it no more where we can just mm-hmm. dick them around. So, yeah. And, you know, once, you know, once that whole uh, – once that whole uh, Wilder Fury thing is over with, you know, it's going to be Joshua Fury. So that's going to kind of get people excited in boxing, too. Like, people are going to be clamoring for it. And I, and I hope it's going to be the mainstream, the mainstream sports public as well to help it, you know, get going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that's fight's going to be epic. Yeah. Yeah, it's an exciting time to watch boxing, man. Um Hasn't always well. I guess it kind of has always been like this. People always talk about you know dark ages of boxing and blah blah blah. But there actually have historically still been a good amount of great boxers through the nineties, through the two thousands, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's still it's still present now. We have a lot of really good boxers at a lot of different weights. So yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of good matches. Uh, I think I'd give it the edge. To, actually, I, I know it's kind of premature to even. Talk about a fight that hasn't even that might not even happen <laughs> that might not even exist, but I give it to Crawford. I give it to Crawford. I I I I I'm inclined to agree. I just really like from a tactical perspective, 
Errol Spence does the basics so well. Like it just you you, you if you want to teach people how to do boxing, I feel like Errol Spence is the guy mm -hmm. because Terence Crawford is unorthodox in his approach, and so you know if you want to teach somebody, hey, here's how you do the basics right. Mm -hmm. Errol Spence is the one, so I really I really like his style. Plus, I met him before. Solid human being. Oh jeez. Yeah. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. Wasn't he in an accident also? Yeah, yeah, he's in an accident. He has his first fight coming up December 5th against Danny Garcia. First fight returned from his car accident, so. Yeah, shouts out to him. Was it a motorcycle accident? I believe so. I believe it so. Was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, like a convertible, right? And, like, he wasn't wearing his seatbelt and, uh, like, the car flipped. Like, Jeez. It was viral, I'm pretty sure. Jeez. Yeah. That's rough. Well, hope, you know what the thing is? He says he's okay, and the doctor said he's going to make a recovery. So, why? Like, I, I yeah, yeah, no, no. Not that he shouldn't fight. It's just, like, he's lucky to be here. So, yeah, yeah. Like, and we're right. lucky to have him still fight. And yeah. we're talking about him fighting, like, Terrence Crawford. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's still 100. Like, that's the thing. It's not like he lost, like, any kind of faculty, which is I good. Not. Yeah, that that's yeah. glory to God on that one. Yeah. Um. Guys, this UFC card. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that, I guess. <laughs> the, 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 okay. Um, I, I hate doing this to UFC because this, this, this is predominantly an MMA podcast. When we started this, I remember David put in, in, in what was it, when we, when we made our list, David in mm. bold underline was like MMA focus. And I was like, can't agree more. We need to focus on MMA. And, and this is where it gets really hard because for the last two weeks, the cards have been, you know, not the best. And it's a pandemic. And it's hard to get guys into the country. And guys test positive. Guys get injured like usual. And as a result, oh, and one guy got a staph infection. And as a result, our main event is Javier Dos Anos versus uh, – Four days notice, Paul Felder. Uh, okay. And I hate to do, do we that. Do you want to start there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with starting top to bottom. Because I actually didn't have a single problem with that with that headline, or like with, with that main event at all. Like, I thought it was, you know, for a fight night card, I thought it was pretty competitive, pretty entertaining i had no problem with the fight itself i thought the fight was very competitive it was a very good fight um it's just like remember when we joked hey is paul falter's gonna come out of retirement for this to save the card and then all of a yes. sudden yeah <laughs> and then all of a sudden you know we get paul felder coming out of retirement to save the card uh you know so it it is what it yeah, is. Did we eat that joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like Paul Felder. I just save that it. we actually said that last week. Yeah, Paul Felder, <laughs> save us. Uh, you know, and it, it's just I, I think if this is how good Paul Felder looked, imagine what could have happened if he had a camp. That's kind of always the inclination I, I think of. You know, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a couple of takeaways. First of all, Paul Felder, what a badass. I mean, yeah. But everybody knew. Like, everybody already knew that. He just solidified it. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame, like, for sure after this. Like, for sure, for sure. Um, and I think, you know, even, like, some of his comments after the fight, like, he didn't even – he hasn't been in an MMA gym in, like, four months. Um, and he hasn't, like, done any grappling in about that time. He's just been hitting pads. And to accept the fight against what is a much superior Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, like – or just grappling in general, like, shouts out to him. Like, that shows, like, he has a lot of guts. He doesn't care about, like, you know, ranking or anything like that. Like, all he cares about is just going out to fight and his legacy. And I think he did a good good job in solidifying that last night. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I have some takes about RDA as well. But, uh, yeah, no, man, just I, I think he was a good role model for a lot of fighters yesterday. Um even the way he was talking about, you know, being honest about cutting weights and um, honest about, uh, you know, the feelings he was having, missing his family and all that kind of stuff. I think more and more fighters could be like Paul Felder, who, let's not forget, isn't just like your meathead, like, sweat. he doesn't need to do this. You know what I mean? Like, he isn't, he doesn't have anything to prove. He could have 
done a different profession. This is a man who's already college educated. He already has a commentator position, so he doesn't have to prove anything in the ring anymore. But Stale goes out, not just, but you know, I don't want to make it too, he fell on the sword. He's still playing a game as we all are in mm -hmm. terms of carrying favor with the organization. But Stale, that doesn't take away from the fact that it's still a sacrificial um, and ballsy thing to do. So. Yeah, yeah, even yeah no, he lot. stepped up. He stepped up and and he uh what's the word I'm looking for? You know, he he was a company man. It's weird to say it like that, but company man, right? He, he, he the boss patted him on the shoulder and said, I mean, "Hey, how many times has best been done it? You know what I mean? Like there's a or Cormier done it. There's a lot of fighters who do the same thing who would step in. I mean, I, I'm struggling to think of like names right now, but there, there's so many guys who are like that who are just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. The the thing, the game that people are playing, they're playing a different game, and you got to respect that at the end of the day, because um, that's the game. That's the kind of guy I want to be. Uh, so shouts out to Paul Felder, man, and also you know striking looked great. He looked fit, but he was training for a marathon anyway, so it didn't like you know. It wasn't like he was out of shape or anything. Um, RDA is a tough guy. He's one of those fighters who's tough to get a gauge on because, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on the matchup. I, I find, like, sometimes he looks like a world beater and sometimes it's just like, whoa, this guy has no business being in this ring with this uh, caliber, it, with all due respect. I, I, but, like, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, what do you, what do you guys think about the fight? Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fight. I... Uh... It, um, you know, I, I enjoyed the fact that it was competitive. Um, you know, it was clear that, you know, when it came to the grappling game, the uh, takedown game, um, and, like, on the ground, it was clear who was the uh, superior uh, the superior martial artist. But um, I, I enjoyed the fact that it was back and forth, you know, uh, when, and I think Michael Bisping said it in the fourth round, you know, when Felder brought him uh kept him in the middle of the cage you know he was successful and i think that had to do with his length and his reach and uh he was uh his his strikes were more imposing so therefore you know he kind he he was able to um he was able to uh you know do get what he wanted at times against uh rda but I think you know just um it, when it came when it came down to the uh wrestling you know RDA got uh he got what he wanted Yeah, and, he you was know, a superior grappler I yeah, would say. And you know and I this is this is one of the times where you know I was like you know clap 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 for for you know the grappler you know uh I really I was like I was kind of like wow I I don't know. I, he kind of just won me over. He kind of won me over with uh, maybe it was just because he was just so much better. But I was like, he kind of won me over with like I kind of wanted to see him, you know, take it to the ground and uh, you know. Um, he fought a smart fight. That's why. I smart, say. yeah. I wanted to see him take it to the ground and you know uh, control the fight and get his points that way. Uh, but yeah, I, I. Plus that left hand too. Like it's not like his striking was bad. His left hand was was really sharp. No, but I think Paul Felder's was better. Yeah, no, I would say Paul Felder was more effective, um, yeah. definitely. But I thought, I thought RDA was very sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I thought. I don't yeah, no, I mean, I, I have so many thoughts about RDA, um, but just really quickly on Felder. Um, or no, you know what? Let's go into RDA. I I thought, yeah, his grappling was way better, um, and just he looked like he'd been prepping for this fight while Paul Felder had not. Um, no, no disrespect, but. Um, what the thing that really stood out to me is that he he's five eight. And he looks bigger. Had, like, he does look bigger. Wow. I always thought he was bigger, like at least five ten. And he was fighting at welterweight, and there was talk of like you know he's fighting this division, and he no, was that was a lightweight fight, right? Yeah, division. it was a lightweight fight, but but still, yeah. But you know, RDA looked like the smaller guy. You know, RDA was the smaller guy. Paul Felder was five eleven. RDA was five eight. Like, he was, like, significantly smaller. Mm -hmm. And it, it just got me thinking of, like, he fought, like, Kamaru, Kobe. Like, these are huge guys. And even if you think of, like, some of the guys in, like, the division below, like, Bantamweight, you have some six foot, six one, six two Bantamweights. Yeah, like, Hallway's 5'11". Like, 
Ortega like, is five ten. You know, like what are we talk. You know, uh, Chad Sung Chong is crazy. six feet. Yeah. It's crazy to me. And it, well, shouts out to him for number one for becoming a champion in the first place. That just shows how tough he is. Moving up to welterweight, it, it's kind of like Kelvin Gastelum. I think is also five eight. If I if I'm not mistaken, or five nine. Five nine. Not a big five one. nine milter, middleweight, which I he, think is insane. But crazy man, crazy. Um, these guys. I'm gonna yeah, be a five. Nine, I'm gonna be a five this. nine middleweight. I'm, Pardon? I'm gonna be a five nine middleweight. <laughs> <laughs> you go to. A, yeah. yeah. Um, man. Who's that guy? Ooh. Who's that guy who has the fifteen uh, knockouts? I'm coming for him. I dream about I dream about I dream about that fight every night. Nice. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think I'm joking. It's fun. It's okay. Man. Yeah. But yeah, no, RDA obviously did a professional job last night. Um, you know. Said he moved his family to Brazil and they all got COVID, which I thought was a weird story. Um, and the only other thing that's really stood out to me in this fight is the scorecard. One judge had it. Yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the what? hell was that? No, okay, I'm glad you brought this up. Oh, my goodness. Okay, boxing judges, I think, are still the worst. I think it, when they go into um, Allie Bird looking at you, Julia Letterman uh, looking at you. But my God. 47. Who 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 in the blue hell gave Paul Felder three rounds? Yeah, man. I don't want to be reactionary, but you know how? <laughs> how did you see that? Like, yeah. With all due respect, I thought Paul Felder fought a good fight as said, and you know he was successful on the feet, but every round basically it hit the ground, and there was only one winner. And usually there was one initiator for like the takedown. So like I don't know how you could give it to anybody else, like, in my opinion, other than RDA. Um, damn, that was a crazy score. A crazy score. I think Blitzwing said, like, that person should go home and give himself a good long look in the mirror. Like, that was an embarrassing score. Uh, but it, <laughs> at least the right winner won. You know, we don't really – see, as much as we rag on the judges in MMA, we don't really have too many – like – Ab- absurd decisions. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm talking, I'm talking, giving Lomachenko only one round. Absurd. Remember that? I don't, we don't get too many of those, but we still every once in a while get reminded that this still is a very broken system. Um, and thank the Lord, another judge didn't go because that would have been a shaft job. But I don't know. Crazy, crazy. Um, and I think it's best elaborated by the other judges giving it a 50-45 to RDA. Yeah. Like, like what fight were you watching? Like, Wasn't even close. Could you? You know what I've always thought though. Maybe they. Maybe that scorecard was a respect scorecard because again, Felder took it out four days notice. Maybe they looked at the other judges and knew that the other judges were going to give it. What was that? Four rounds to one. They gave it. Four rounds yeah, to one. Yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah. they were like, okay, you know what? He came in on four days' notice, and he was still competitive, and we don't want to make it look like he was getting his you-know-what kick the entire time. So let's put in a 47-48 just for fun. And I know that's not, you know, the right thing to do technically, but maybe it's just one of those, like, respect cards, you know? Yeah, no, if you're doing that, you should be fired because, you know, this is people's paydays yeah. at the end of the day. And it was also a 50-45, so it was 5 and oh. Like, it was a clear... Clear domination. Oh yeah, for um, sure, for sure. Um, yeah, man, and this lightweight division just gets more and more interesting. Where does RDA go from here? Depending on not depending, Khabib is not coming back, so I think we can all just. And if he is coming back, it's going to be for GSP, not for yeah. any of the up and coming guys. Um, so, Felder was ranked number six, I think, uh, before this. Seven, so, seven, or, I, I seven. Have, yeah. Then where does RDA fit? Ooh, where does RDA fit into things? <laughs> And do you want to see him going up against like a Tony Ferguson or something like that, or I don't know, like because uh, I don't know. Well, the Charles problem. Oliveira. The problem was always that um, RDA could like it wasn't that RDA isn't good at lightweight. It's just that he has a tough time making the weight, and that means that he's gonna suffer. But he looked good. His cardio was good. It looks like if he gets a long camp and you know is, is smart. Um, He's going to be okay. I do think his Achilles heel, though, is 
wrestlers, right? When you get a wrestler who's superior, that's where he tends to struggle. Um, so when you look down at this division, you tend to see what you notice is aside from Habib, the top half of this division are not really known for the wrestling. Like you got Justin Gaethje, who's, you know, obviously all American wrestler, but uses his wrestling more for defensive purposes than offensive purposes, um, which could present problems to RDA, but you never know. Then you got Conor McGregor, who through and through is a wrestler. And, you know, that would be interesting. He did call out Conor McGregor after, which shoot your shot, young man, but I, I don't think that's going to happen for him. Um, yeah, no, I was, I didn't even want to, yeah. I'm surprised we didn't even talk about that. That was a crazy shout out. Hey, what? Michelle Pereira once called out Jorge Masvidal. Never forget. So, look, <laughs> if, if, if people <laughs> shoot your shot, shoot your shot. I once saw, you know what I saw, and I had to retweet it on the leg kick page. I saw Hamza Shemayev call out Israel Asanya with probably some, one of the best tweets I've ever, I, one of my favorite tweets. He, he tweets, do you want to fly, question mark, at Stylebender. And then has a has a video of him t- t- picking up a guy, running him Matt Hughes style across the other side of the the cage and slamming him. <laughs> you shoot your shot. Why not? Like I that, like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. But also, no disrespect, RDA. That that fight is not happening. <laughs> Man, it was gonna happen. I remember when RDA was champion and he booked it. They had it booked. And then RDA pulled out because of a broken foot, which you should. You should. But it's it's unfortunate because Carl McGregor said best. Whenever you fight him, it's red panty night. You're getting paid. You are getting Hilarious. paid. Hilarious. Right? So. Yeah, man. I'm tired of talking about Carl McGregor, man. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's okay. It's, it's just like fight. Yeah. You know? Like, 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 just fight. Yeah. <laughs> but my whole point is to say that when you look down this list, there – it looks like there's some favorable matchups for RDA if he can just get the weight under control, right? Um, you're, yeah. you're, you're not seeing a lot of wrestlers, right? Um, which is why Islam Makashev I thought was going to be a bad matchup for him because I think Islam Makashev um, is is really a number two ranked and 12 ranked clothing. Like, it's he, – he's a really good fighter, extremely defensively responsible on the feet, a willing striker too, which is weird, and, you know – from what you hear, every bit of good as good of a grappler as Habib. So, um, you know, because of that, uh, which, by the way, funny, if you guys want to look at something funny, look at Islam Makashev versus Chase Saldate um, on I Am The Bay. It's pretty It's pretty funny because he just, like, ragsdolls this this high school number one state California wrestler just for fun. And he's like, oh, I got a new technique I want to show you, Chase. Come. But neither here nor there. Uh <laughs> Yeah, no, I think this is why I thought Israel Makashev was going to be a very tough t- test for him. But, you know, to, uh, to RDA's credit, he took the fight, a risky fight against RDA, um, Paul Felder, and, you know, was pretty dominant, still competitive. Paul Felder was still competitive, but pretty dominant. And so I guess, the Jesus, I'm rambling. But my roundabout point is, you know, there's a lot of interesting fights where I would say that RDA could be very favorable in because he's not going to be facing a superior wrestler or on paper a superior wrestler. Uh, and I think he could do well. I still think, you know, once he gets to the top of the division, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Dan Hooker is like, what, 6'4? Or some, some sh- stuff like that, like 6'2? He's huge. Yeah. Anyway, I saw. Tony Ferguson re- is, remember when he was uh, beside. Um, Israel Asanya sparring him, and they looked basically the same. Like the same height. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. Justin Gaethje, that's a bad matchup. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I like RDA. I like what I see. I always have really high hopes for him. As I said, I feel like he's one of those fighters, you know, you never know what you're going to get sometimes. Um, sometimes he looks like a world beater, um, and sometimes it, the other guy is just... Like, it just looks like a really bad matchup for him. And you're right. Now that I think about it, it's usually when he's fighting a wrestler. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and it makes sense because he's so, not so small, but he's 5'8", right? So, yeah, it's a t- it, to Yeah, it's a tough time. And he cuts a lot of weight, too. So, And, and one of the things um, that I can attest to is when you cut a lot of weight, your arms give out. Like, not just your arms, but, like, your muscular endurance is not the same. Right, because you're not getting yeah. those electrolytes to your, right, your 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 muscles. Um, 
Jesus, I, I'm trying to sound all smart, smarter than I actually am. But you're not getting kind of the same nutrients and electrolytes to your muscles. So your arms give out and your legs give out. And it makes a lot of sense. But I think if RDA can talk to a nutritionist, get that under control, you know, then I think watch out. Because if you're not a wrestler, he's going to he's going to grind you out, right? True. That's very true. That's very true. Um, all yeah. right. I think we talked enough about that fight. Um Unless you have any more thoughts on it, no, nah, I'm 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 straight. Uh, Ganna Ganna had a, d- a dark day oh yesterday. Oh my god, <laughs> that hurt my that hurt my soul. Hey yo, let me just start by saying oh, this: Buddy go. came in stacked, D's like every <laughs> Ghanaian fighter ever, just stereotypically D's. Like stupidly, we, it, it, it's a dark, it's a dark day for us today. Um, oh my god! That one, yeah, that will hurt my soul. That will hurt my soul. Yeah. Um, and you know they gave him the favorite treatment too. Uh he was you know, a favorite too. He was the favorite. Oh my! And they were god. hyping this guy up, and you know, shouts out to him. He has a really good record, actually. I think he only has like two losses or something like that. Like, so he, he's a respectable fighter, you know, like. Uh, and yeah, he, and he, and he was um he he was falsely accused of uh, yeah. sexual assault and it came and he's making his comeback after that. Um, he he obviously lost in his comeback fight from that, but he's you know he's still trying to make his what's the word I'm trying comeback. to make? yeah he's still like kind of getting back into it. So this is definitely a guy who's who's been through it. He's been he was in the wilderness for a while and now he's back out. Um, and I would have, and you know, so you, you're cheering for him. You're cheering for him, except for the fact that, like, technically speaking, I'm a descendant from South Ghana, and he's from the North. Don't, so, don't, don't, don't I'm do kidding. That. I'm kidding. Don't distinguish yourself. You guys and your weird inter, in, in, inter-nation beef. I got nothing to do with that. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. Um, I'm, I'm kidding. We're all we're no, one I, Ghana. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to hate too much, but like, man, uh, there's no, there's nothing to hate really. It was yeah. just. He got caught, he got and caught. yeah, yeah. Put the um, lights out. no, you know what? No, I'm not. Jo- I'm not done joking on fucking uh, <laughs> uh, Hassan. I'm sorry, but man, this guy, even his intro shocks me. <laughs> his hype vid. He has such a Ghanaian voice. Oh, I, I voice. love it. I love it. it, dude. I love it. It's like I'm here to prove. <laughs> I am here to to do. You call me a bizaka. <laughs> yeah, I have I have done judo for so long, and I, oh. you for know, real. and also yeah, he's a judo practitioner. I, like it's really not ragging on him. Like he's definitely tough. Like if, yeah, he's the kind of guy. Like if you knew him in real life, you would be like, that's one tough dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, man's man, man's man. But you know, it's a it's a dark day because. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Yo, it's 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. Uh, why? No, why? I'm not laughing at the, like, the, the, man, it was just wild. And, man, Chaos Williams got that dude. Yeah. Like, got him. Like, I've not seen a knockout like that in a long time. Um, I don't know about you guys, but, like, straight up, like, legs closed together, like, falling flat on your back. Like, I've not seen one of those in a long time. I mean, Kind of, sorta, in a way, Mirshar versus Hamza Shamayev kind of was like that, where yeah. one punch, ooh, where it, you know when like you you see a punch in the bar and all of a sudden you hear in the back, ooh, yeah, it was but that. I feel like even in that one, Mirshar kind of like collapsed. Like this one was kind of like almost like just like oh, know, like <laughs> literally backwards. Like it was crazy, man. No, because it's, it's so aggressive. Because he's trying to jump in, and do you know yeah. the crazy part? Also, he he had his guard up. That's the crazy part. Yeah, but like see, his hands were up like this, and it just snuck in there and like got him. Must have been perfectly on the chin. But yeah. see, this is why every week I t- I tell you guys, swing and miss in mixed martial arts is a one. You need to generate swing and miss, or at the very least, you need to have a comprehensive par- parry game where you're not allowing things to even get like get to a guard. You have to kind of have a, some sort of comprehensive way to generate a swing and miss, or just not touching you. Because it, punches can go through, punches can go through, and yeah. um, you know, to if there is a thing, I guess you can. It's hard to criticize to critique thirty seconds of a fight where one punch is is the deciding factor. But Abdul Abdul Razak El Hassan, legs are close together, hands are, his chin is straight up, hands are kind of not you know he's not bouncing, not generating 
some what's sort of connect. What's the name or, of the gentleman he fought again? Ka- Chaos Williams. Chaos Williams. What Chaos a name. Williams. Um, Yo, a name, did you see like the determination in his face before the fight began? Like, oh, yeah, just the, it was super intense. Yeah, and he's like twenty six, which I always find it when you have weird when you have young guys in the UFC or like guys my age because I try to put my head like myself in their head and try to think like yo why are you me mugging this guy but I get it he's he's hype he's focused and yeah you need youthful exuberance and yeah. t- uh, almost a bit of delusion to, yeah. to yeah. be competing in the UFC and imagine that for a young kid facing legends you know and facing you know or a guy like Al Hassan yeah. who like the wrong mistake like you take the wrong step that guy's taking your head off yeah so mm-hmm. but you know Shouts out to him. He he made the right decision, I guess, and put man, took his head off. So it's a dark day for us. I, it it is. Man, oh man, this oh one, man, oh man. This um, one hurts. <laughs> what? Where? Uh, they, give me five good oh, Canadian oh, fighters right oh, now. Five. Oh god. Um. Oh, like does it have to be all combat sports or just or just uh. All. We'll go all. All right. Obviously, the king of Zuma Nelson. Zuma Nelson. Bullet. Uh, bullet, bullet. Um, brup, brup, brup. Joshua Cloudy. Brup, brup. Look who that is. I, I don't know who that is. I'll look who that is. Uh, he's, he's a king of the lighter weight classes. When he was doing his thing in the lighter weight classes, man, he was... Yeah, no, Ghana has a rich boxing culture. That's the weird thing about it is that, like, I would have liked to see some. I know he's a judoka, a judo practitioner, but, you yeah, know, but he, he, boxing, he, because Ghana has a rich boxing, um, you know, history and a rich, you know, there are still some, a lot of, I know they're transitioning a bit, but there's still a lot of great boxing gyms in Ghana that he could have went to the, to really sharpen himself up. But, of course, he's a Texas native now. He's a Texas, uh, he moved to Texas. Which a is lot interesting. of canyons in Texas. Yeah, a lot, which is interesting. But there's a lot of black people in Texas. Period. Yeah, is that the reason why? Texas. Is that the reason why they thought they could turn Texas blue in the election? Uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm That's just... funny. No, they're going to turn all the Nigerians and Ghanaians red. That's how that works. Look at Maru. But no, it, just crazy. Yeah, I, what he's five. Once again, he's one of those dudes. He's five ten. He fights at one seventy. He's a knockout artist. Stacked, yeah. Ghanaian. You expect him to be decent with like boxing, but with all due respect, from what like the two fights I've seen this year, it, um, he looks like a power yeah. guy. He looks like see, this is the thing. Um, there's a difference between a puncher and a boxer, right? Yeah, he's not a boxer. Yeah. Um, is yeah. he like a puncher? Like throw some leg kicks, my G. No, he threw oh, a man. leg kick. It's just that's the thing. He didn't have a real, really good indication of distance management too. Like it's yeah. just yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not hating. Good, good for him, man. He, he's, he's in the tough. UFC. He's tough, but like yeah, Castle got him. Um, not really much. No, Nigeria, Nigeria is definitely Nigeria is definitely king of the MMA's. Uh, I'm king of MMA for the Af- for the African continent. Uh, 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 I can't live. Yeah. Never last. You know the vibe. We yeah, we had pro- we ha- he's still our guy though, and it's a dark day. Yeah. Um, I was in mourning all morning. It's probably all that burnt jalap they're eating makes him angry. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you come from my people, you think I'm just gonna let you go? Just let you slide? <laughs> no, man, he hit you with a burnt jalap joke. That's hilarious. Oh my god. Um, any other fights you want to talk about? Uh, I guess. Oh, am I mute? No, I guess quickly. The Yoder fight, you know what? I'm not going to talk about the Yoder fight. Let's talk about it the fight. So no, let's fun. let's talk about it. Sucked. It sucked. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Yoder right. fight. I don't want to make fun of them. I'm not but, making I'm not making fun of them. Like they're both skilled, talented fighters, right? And they're in the UFC, and they deserve to be in the UFC. But the fight itself sucked. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't one of my favorites. Definitely. What I will say about this card, it was sneakily better than last week's. Sneakily, I don't know whether I was just in a better mood watching it, but. I thought it was a little bit, like, a li- little bit more entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I-, I did want to talk about the Sean Strickland fight. I think he fought on last week's card, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. Or not too long ago. Um, you know, his punches looked really good. His boxing looked really good. Uh, I don't know. 
I think he has some kind of history with Michael Bisping. They keep trying to like um, kind of touch on it and not touch on it. I don't think Bisping really wants to go back in, into it. It was weird. Uh, they had a really weird uh, post-fight interview, if, I'm not, <laughs> if you remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what the beef is. I can't remember what it is, but, uh, you know, it's... <sighs> Yeah, they definitely have it something weird. Like yeah, I think it sounds like it's something one of those like gym things. You know what I mean? Like you know, you were sparring partners with somebody back in the day, and maybe you guys weren't like best of friends. And if I'm not mistaken, in the first Strickland fight, he was like talking mad smack, like probably the most smack I've seen in uh in, in a fight. Like it was borderline unprofessional. Uh, I get Jack Marshman, um, and that was yeah two weeks ago, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he was just talking mad smack the entire time. Um, this fight, not so much. I mean, so I guess shout out him for that. But yeah, if as, you, it might have been like a you know just a guy who you had some friction with before, and all these years later he's still fighting, and now you got to commentate on the fight. That must be weird. It you know if you connect the dots, I mean they both are mill weights, they both are British. Maybe they came up through the scene. Um, Look, I he's not you, British. He's American. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Um, why did I think they were both, <laughs> like that's weird? But yeah, no, they're both middleweights. They both they probably were probably uh, in around the same area, and you know, at one point, um, like I I say, I always there, there's a couple. We can talk about this off air, but there's a couple pro fighters, boxers, and uh, mixed martial artists that like I haven't had the most positive experience with, right? Um. Mm. So, you know, and, and definitely if I if we ever had to do an interview or something, I'd keep it professional, but it's it's still one of those things that, that does irk you, right? Like I still think about it with, with one particular boxer who I think we all know who I'm talking about. Like we'll talk about it off air. <laughs> who I I just it was really disappointing. In you know, really disappointing. So I can see Sean Strickland and Michael Biz being having some sort of really weird unresolved beef that just will not get solved, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh okay, so uh, I want okay, to yeah, well, before, yeah, I was sorry, gonna say you... before anything, let's talk about David's beef with uh the first fight of the card. <laughs> okay, well I I looked at it now and I realized I didn't even watch the pre card. Card. It's very unlike me, but um, there's there's literally no knockouts, just you, you know, uh, you, uh, decisions the entire time. So, guess I didn't miss too much. What I will say though is that first fight of the main event, I think her name was Corey McKenna. Corey spent spelled with a Y uh, versus K Hansen, something like that. The sponsor for the fight was called Chick Fight, and it was this movie. And I gotta say, who greenlit that in the marketing department? They probably because you know, here's what probably happened. I'll, I'll tell you what happened because well, some I've touch executive. Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can go into it because I feel like I've talked a lot, but I, I feel like it was just the most demeaning, most embarrassing, and degrading thing you could have possibly done to these two young fighters. They were both like 21. Um, I don't think I've ever seen them fight. They must have fought in the UFC, but I've never seen any of the fights. At least not in the main event. Definitely not. Um, and you put them on this card. They, they get this opportunity on this main event, even if it's a fight night. And the sponsor is Chick Fight? Like, really? <laughs> like, really? It's Chick Fight. And also, like, the trailer sucks. It's like... And when I was watching it... And, you know, lamenting it. My girlfriend made the point yesterday that who's watching who's watching UFC fight nights? It's not girls. It's not white girls. It's not yeah. black girls. Yeah. It's white men, mostly. And mostly guys. So they're marking it to us, knowing that this is a movie yeah. that doesn't even appeal to the gender it's supposed to be like celebrating. Man, embarrassing. Whoever yeah. greenlit that should be fired, like on the spot. Like, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> So, that was a terrible decision. The fight, you know, it wasn't the greatest fight, but like they deserved way more than that. Yeah. Um, and I would not sell like support that movie at all because like what like what was going on here? Chick fight and doing you know, the crazy part. 
is that was the only fight that thing showed up for it because the rest of the fights on the card was nowhere to be found. Movie was nowhere to be seen. Jeez. Exactly. So like it was just like why did you even who was it just for the money like. What are you trying to do here? Be funny or something? No, do you know what? Look, I'll say it like this: I've met a lot of stupid TV executives. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say a lot. Actually, that's a lie. I'll walk that back because there's a. I've met a lot of smart ones too, but I've met a couple ones that like are. I wouldn't say stupid, but try to be too cute for their own good. Try to be too cute for their own good. Now, I think what happened was they saw two women. They they got a call about undercut. Ground Fight Club that is kind of MMA inspired. I, I watched. I looked at the the bio because we had this conversation um, pre pre uh, recording. I looked at the bio and it is MMA inspired and MMA focused. It got Bella Thorne in it, by the way. Uh, you know, shouts out to Bella Thorne. But anyway, David, David hates that you're promoting this movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> not promote the movie. It's not I'm not promote. I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying. Um, what's the word? I'm I honestly for? don't like. I, it's not like I don't feel any anybody like I get it from a business perspective. I get it. But also like you can't say like we want to champion women's right and we respect women and blah, 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 blah. And then also do stuff like that. And the sad thing is the UFC does and so well. And that movie like looked really bad. It, it's no it, shot, but it, it looks really Yeah, it looks like it yeah, looks, it looks like, like ass. It looks like ass. Yeah. So why would you do that to like, you know, two young fighters you're trying to build? Like, do you care about the fighters at all or are they just you know, vehicles for you to make money off them. I mean, we all know the answer. Hey, I was going <laughs> to say, come on. You, you. <laughs> come on, man. But, like, don't be so brazen with it. Like, they might as well have put, like, two Barbie dolls in there and just, like, you know, bash them together and said, ah, check fight. Like, that's basically what they were doing. Like, it was, no, so, it was so demeaning. Yeah, because um, I, I was going to say, back to my – the point I was trying to make is I think they saw two women in there not very well known, so it wasn't gonna be someone like Amanda Nunes or anything that they had to kind of screw over. And they were like, "Oh, let's let's make a weird parallel between the two, and yeah. and maybe it'll stick." And and because we have a predominantly right wing audience, they're gonna just think, "Ooh, women fighting and women fighting! Wow, double entendre!" <laughs> Um, you know the funny thing is that it, it looked like the kind of movie that a certain kind of population. And I don't want to make it seem like you know we're smarter or better than anybody, but I can see a different version of me watching that kind of movie and being like, "Yeah, that sounds interesting." Um, but like, yeah, I, I agree. They would have never done that to Amanda Nunes, Valentina Shevchenko is fighting in like a couple weeks. They're not gonna do that to her. In like next week, they're not gonna do that to her. So. Yeah, I just thought it was. Weird. I mean, you know what? Now that I think about it, oh my god, oh my god, holy god, they might do it to Valentina Shevchenko. If they do that to Shevchenko, I mean, I don't know where, I don't know where we go from that. <laughs> she just better, she better be in the movie and getting a cut. But that's <laughs> another thing. Like it was just a stereotypical dumbass movie, man. Yeah, um, and I have At no least problem with dumbass movies because everybody's got to make a buck. But uh, just we don't. Why demean actual fighters? We would never promote a dumb. I mean, maybe they would for a guy like a. Are you kidding? Um, Didn't they promote "Here Comes the Boom"? Um, I love Kevin wait, James, wait, wait, but wait, wait, yeah, wait. that was actually an alright movie. Chill out now. That was I didn't watch that one. I, I mean, no, no, no. I get, I get it. That is like demeaning, like because it's fake and it's kind of like something that'll never happen. Dude, so, they, they had so, Jason so Mayhem Miller, that. who's like, who yeah. was what? What was he? I think one. What's the word I'm looking for? I think, uh, geez, what, what am I trying to say? They had Jason Mayhem Miller look like a fool. Look like a fool. So, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, uh, yeah. They, they, who, no, you're right. They who, went, like, yeah. literally went on jail, like, mid-promotion. But they, they had guys acting like weird caricatures yeah, yeah, of yeah. what an MMA fighter is. Like, the whole honor and respect thing, and here comes the boom. It was, still very, it was still very entertaining, though. It was an entertaining movie. I guess, but it was entertaining for the wrong reasons. It was funny. It was like, ha, ah, let's look, let's laugh at all well, these Kevin MMA James players being stupid. Comedian. Yeah, no, but it was who like likes, who likes mixed martial arts. So I get it. And but this is not a movie podcast. So. No, no, but my but my whole point is is that like it's the dude, meaning I, to it, the fighters. It's yeah. the that movie was almost the meaning to the fighters too. And but then they promoted it during their yeah. So imagine now demeaning women fighters, you know, female fighters or women fighters who. You know, have been who have a history of being demeaned in the in general. And the sad thing is, the UFC was doing so well with female promotion, so well. So it is what it is. I, I'm that's my rap for the day. 
It is what it is. That's my rant, really. I mean, you know, it's nothing to go write to your local counselor about, but it's enough to irk me and be frustrated because, <laughs> like, there's just no need for it. Yeah. Um, yep. I mean, maybe Alex Baldwin, um, Alec Baldwin, swung him a buck and was like, "Hey, you know, move. maybe someone definitely swung somebody a buck. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, look, Floyd Mayweather was was iota away from fighting Logan Paul for fifty million dollars. You'd be surprised what people will do for money. Uh... <laughs> Wait, I, see, I try to stay away from news like that. Because this is not good for my not good for my health. <laughs> you were about to have an aneurysm. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Uh, um. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I don't think we got any questions today because I forgot and I knew I should have because this nice. card was barren. So and yeah. That, um. You know, I'm a terrible producer. I'm like, you know, no. I'm an idiot TV producer. That's. <laughs> But yeah, um, maybe tune in next week. I'll talk about a story I had with an, a pro boxer and how that went. Yeah. Um, When's the NBA draft? I can't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but the season's soon, though, right? Oh yeah, the season's like December twenty second. So the draft has to be soon. Yeah. Because they gotta get them uh, those dudes training yeah. ASAP. You think uh, Fred Van Fleet and uh, Serge will stick around? Probably not. Yeah. I'm cool and surge, but I'll take Fred Van Vliet. I hope they give him the max. Yeah, I hope they give Fred some money. Okay, here's the problem though. If 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 they really think Giannis is gonna come to this to this country, right? And I don't think so, but if they if if Masai really thinks it, then you have to play the long game and get his ass over here, right? Yeah, Giannis and that isn't means, coming. And how much is Ibaka on? Ibaka's on like what, twenty something? No, Ibaka, I think is a four at that point was a four year fifteen, but he had a career year, so that means he's gonna get paid. Was an E. So like Ibaka? He's gonna get paid. He's gonna get paid. He uh, had a good year. He, he, had, he had a hell he of a year. year. There was there was points in that playoffs where I honestly thought he was the best player on the Raptors. All right, it's okay. At, at point, you know? let's, in the playoffs. Let's there were points let's wrap. <laughs> is Serge Ibaka the best player on the Raptors? No, 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 no. He played. Never. He played like he was the best player on the Raptors in some spots. Um, now it's easy to do that. Like Pascal Siakam last year did that. Sometimes it's easy to do that when you are not the main focus. But I don't want to hit on Pascal too much. I think he can. He'll I don't want. I think fine. he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah I don't want to hit on Pascal too much. But it was just the immediate shock of how he just disappeared. <laughs> like just the, it was like you. It was like it was like it was like you needed. It was like uh friggin. I don't know. I was talking to my who's, friend who's about Superman's, that. Who's Superman's our travel? It's like Lex Luthor showed up with some doomsday machine, and Superman's nowhere to be found. It's like it was just tough. Yeah, no. Um, I I, I was talking to my news. yeah I was talking to my friend about this yesterday. It was like not yesterday, sorry, uh, Tuesday on how Pascal Siakam was operating at such a negative that it was it was literally shocking. Yeah, it, it was, was just the immediate shock. Yeah, that had people all up in arms, but. No, yeah, Pascal. I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, everyone wasn't expecting it the year before. And also, he was a number two option. Mm -hmm. And this year, he was the number one option. Yeah, he was so. the guy. So, mm -hmm. Or was supposedly going to the playoffs. And, yeah. I mean, well, no one in their right mind thought he was going to have a Kawhi Leonard-like run. But, I mean, you know, then again, right mind in he Toronto thought he would do something. I yeah. mean, whether he got the most points or whatever, he was at least, like, the main focal point of the offense and unfortunately as you said this year he kind of or this year was kind of more of a negative as opposed to a positive or even like a neutral um so yeah, yeah. he was dude I, I was man he, he at points honestly he could have revealed a celtics jersey and i would have been like i'm not surprised <laughs> <laughs> i'm not surprised <laughs> no. yeah crazy but yeah uh I guess I'm going to do my thing now unless anyone wants to threaten the children. Who wants to be stuffed on threaten the children? Anybody? Consider your children threatened. <laughs> Consider your entire family threatened. <laughs> All right. Very it low energy threats today. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it has a different different vibe when we do the threat. Oh, yeah, because when we do... Stefano hasn't even been threatening lately, though. He, his threatening lately has been sucky. I got to say. He hasn't even been threatening. Yeah. Stefano, we need your threat, Stefano. Man, come up yeah. the threads. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's Warball fell. That's sorry. I, you got me. Um, okay. 
in this crazy mixed up world where it's dark at five o'clock somehow it's insane um just remember you got three things you got life you got family and you got jeremy's ashy hands i mean this podcast <laughs> Jazz hands. stay safe everybody see you